So Howard Schitt's laid out uh, how he would govern this week, and it's it's embarrassing, <laughs> exactly like you'd expect. Take a look. What I can tell you is I've given a great deal of thought to what it would mean uh, if I run for president and I'm fortunate enough to win as an independent centrist. And what I would do is I'd make a promise to the American people that uh, as president, my administration and the Oval Office would be the most diverse administration in the history of the country in terms of bipartisanship, diversity, women, people of color, and do everything I can that the cabinet and the administration would be emblematic of the American people. Would you set benchmarks with that, like X number of women, X number of Republicans, X number uh, of people from the West versus the no, East? No, I don't or? think we have to send benchmarks, but what I would do very clearly is demonstrate to the American people that what I'm, what I'm talking about as a centrist is, is assembling a group of people in which the ideology is not what is going to be in the room. What's going to be in the room is love of country, restoring faith and trust in the United States government, and bringing a group of people and thought leaders together who are there for one purpose, to exceed the expectations of the American people. And that would be a cabinet and an administration that would be the most diverse and bipartisan in the history of the country. And you presume that if it's a Republican Commerce Secretary, or a guy who was a Republican who's nominated to run the Commerce Department, yeah. that a potentially Democratic-controlled Senate would be okay nominating that or confirming that person? Well, I, I think that what's going to happen is if I'm fortunate enough to win, if I do run, I think the American people will have spoken with such a loud voice to demonstrate to the members of Congress that we want significant transformative change. And I would, I would lead that change and lead that charge. Well, Schultz also said he would not sign any legislation that isn't passed with bipartisan support. The former Starbucks CEO says he won't announce his candidacy until he looks at the polling numbers. The only positive from that is that last point. Apparently, he said, oh, I'm not going to officially announce until I look at poll numbers. Okay, well, then what's your benchmark? How high do your poll numbers have to be to get in? Because I got news for you. If you set that line at like 15%, you're never getting in. You're never jumping in. So I hope that you set that line pretty high. Imagine he sets it at like, oh, I have to get over like 40% support to get in. Pfft. You're just utterly wasting your time, dude. His approval rating uh, varies between 4% and 7%. And that's approval rating. That's not like, hey, would you vote for Schultz? If you ask that, it's going to be less than 1%. And a lot of the people are going to be like, who? I don't know who you're talking about. So the only good news from that clip is that last part where apparently Schultz is like leaving, dropping little hints that like, okay, maybe I won't embarrass myself. Okay, good, good. Right now, well, right now you're being thoroughly embarrassed, but at least if you're saying I won't in the future, then that means you might drop out before the race, which is good. Um, now, let's go through this because th I find I, he is really a living meme. He's radical centrism in real life. He's like... He's just the embodiment, the caricature of a vapid, know-nothing political guy who thinks that his lazy-ass takes are, like, brilliant. You know, it's, it's like if you're at Thanksgiving or something and you have, like, a, an apolitical slash non-political kind of character and you're talking politics with somebody and then they chime in and they're like, you know, pff, if I was in charge... I'd try to compromise. Oh, oh, would you? Oh, you fucking genius. Nobody ever thought of that, ever. You know, like, it's just so... It's such. It's like the default setting that they think is somehow intellectually superior, but it's not. In fact, it's really naive, actually, when you look at how Washington really functions. P me, bro, I'm above the fray, okay? Sometimes I agree with the right, sometimes I agree with the left. I'm gonna find, like, the midpoint and stuff. That's what I'm gonna do. Oh, you're, aren't you fucking I intelligent? It's so sad. Okay. So he says, at one point he says, we're going to pick the most diverse administration, and he means in terms of ideology, he says in terms of ideology, but also he means in terms of traits. So he wants the most diverse in terms of ethnic background, the most diverse in terms of religion, presumably gender, but he's saying also in terms of ideology. Now, he's almost up front playing the game of like, 
oh, I will try to use identity politics to co-opt people to vote for me simply because he thinks people will value that over actual policy substance, which he's going to learn the hard way. That ain't the way it works. People are not going to be like, oh, yes, let me take a fucking rainbow administration that believes in nothing. That's not going to happen. And then in terms of, like, the most diverse in terms of ideology, I think this is honestly the most silly point because he then goes on to say, oh, ideology is not going to be in the room. Wait, which is it? You just said the most diverse in terms of ideology, and then now you said, no, 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 we're going to be totally non-ideological. And there's another point where he said, um, you didn't see it here, but it was reported on that he said, I will not sign any partisan bills. <laughs> what, is, <laughs> what does that even mean? It doesn't mean anything. I mean, presumably it means like, oh, if only one side of the aisle votes for the bill, then I won't sign it. But dude, you're going to get nothing accomplished ever. You know how many Obamacare is an individual mandate plan. That plan was originally made by the Heritage Foundation, which is a right wing think tank. It was supported by Newt Gingrich and Chuck Grassley and Bob Dole. Mitt Romney implemented it in Massachusetts, Republican governor. When Obama proposed it, you know how many Republican votes he got for Obamacare? Remember, it's their idea. It's originally a right wing idea. How many votes did he get? Zero. Zero. And this is the guy who thinks, like, I'm not going to sign any partisan bills, bro. I'm going to bring everybody together. That's what I'm going to do. Well, guess what? The Democrats and the Republicans are only going to agree 90% of the time to do shitty things. Howard, people don't like Washington, D.C. They don't like the establishment. And you're effectively running a campaign saying, I'm going to be the epitome of Washington, D.C. and the establishment. I will bring together this asshole that you hate and that asshole that you hate to do assholey things that you all hate. He's so stupid. And I really, you know, probably the thing that annoys me the most about him is he thinks that he is non-ideological. You know, he thinks that like, no, 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 everybody else is just fucking brainwashed and they have their ideology and they're so backwards and they're, you know, almost intolerant in their belief systems. And me, all I care about is what works, bro. And I'm non-ideological. Howard, there is no such thing as being non-ideological. Just because you don't like labels doesn't mean they don't apply to you. I never understood people like that. Pff, me, bro? I don't like to be labeled. It doesn't matter if you don't like it. You fit somewhere. There is some label that describes you. Maybe it's a rare one that's not often used for other people. Maybe you have a weird mix of beliefs. But you fit somewhere on a political spectrum. You do have some kind of political ideology, even if you think your ideology is non-ideological. And in the case of Howard Schultz, it is deeply, deeply ideological because his philosophy is this. The midpoint between the Republicans in Washington, D.C. and the Democrats in Washington, D.C. is usually correct. And what that means is, what is Howard Schultz? A massive corporatist, somebody who's socially liberal and fiscally conservative. And again, that doesn't mean he's reflecting the people of the United States. It means he's trying to find the midpoint between insanely corrupt, far-right Washington, D.C., where the Democrats are center-right and the Republicans are far-right and they're both pro-corporate. And he's trying to find the midpoint over there. And the thing that pissed me off is he says, uh, we want an administration that's going to be emblematic of the American people. How? What do you mean? You want to know what being emblematic of the American people would mean? Here's what it would mean. You fight for Medicare for all. 70% of Americans want Medicare for all. You fight for a living wage. 80% uh, of the American people want to raise minimum wage. You fight for ending the drug war. 62% of Americans want to legalize marijuana. You fight for ending the wars. Only 17% of Americans want to be in Afghanistan. You fight for left-wing priorities. Left-wing priorities. You fight for Bernie Sanders' philosophy. If you really cared about an administration that reflects the will of the American people, that's what you'd be for, but you're not for that. You're not for that. You're doing a billionaire vanity project, and you're a joke. 